Hey there crafty friends, my name is Misty, welcome to Glee Spin Designs. In today's video, I combined the top 12 Dollar Tree DIYs using their wood products. So without further ado, let's get crafting. For this DIY, I started out with the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, also known as Jenga blocks, but all I did was take the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree, which I've said it in previous videos, and I will say it again, that super glue wood glue is amazing. So I just add a little bit of the super glue wood glue and a little bit of hot glue onto the Jenga block pieces, and then I start just gluing them together until I have seven Jenga blocks glued together. Right now I'm making the side panels to the lanterns so you could make these longer or shorter depending on how big you would like your lantern to be. But once you have seven of those glued together you want to make four of those total so therefore you will have four rows of seven Jenga blocks. The seven Jenga blocks glued together is for the larger lantern. For the smaller lantern I glued five Jenga blocks together instead of seven. And again, I use the super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue to glue those together and you will do four rows of those as well. Once all the Jenga block pieces are glued together, you could leave them like this, but I personally like to use the Dollar Tree spackling to go over the Jenga block pieces just to make it all nice and smooth so that it doesn't look like it is a bunch of game pieces glued together and it really looks like a nice long side panel. Again, this is just personal preference. You could leave them exactly how they are and start painting them, but I personally like to take this extra little step just to give them that really clean finished look. Once the spackling was dry, I do take my zip sander and just sand it down just a little bit more to make sure that it is all completely smooth. Now that I have all of them sanded, I just take my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color Linen White and I paint all eight of those side pieces. So Dollar Tree has many, many, many different options on what you could use for the tops and bottoms of your lanterns. I've made so many different lanterns and I believe they were all literally everything it was from Dollar Tree. So trust me, there is so many different things. For these lanterns, I'm using these wood boxes from Dollar Tree. They do come in three different sizes and they have these cute little like metal label holders on them and I just remove them with a little screwdriver and I'm going to do that to two of the larger boxes and two of the medium sized boxes. I do not need any of the smaller boxes at all. So again, you just need two larger and two medium boxes. Then I take the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white yet again and I paint all of those boxes as well. To start assembling the lantern, I'm using the longer pieces first to build the larger lantern and I added some of that super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue again and I just glue that longer piece to the inside corner of one of the larger boxes. I repeated the same steps with the other three longer Jenga block pieces, adding the super glue wood glue as well as the hot glue and gluing it to the inside corner of the larger box. I do want to point out you want to make sure that your label holder piece that you're going to be screwing back on is facing the way that you want it to be, which is hopefully facing forward. Add some glue to the top of the top of the Jenga blocks and then you can place that second box right on top and you have this already nice lantern shape. And then I do the same exact steps yet again for the smaller lantern, which is taking now the five piece Jenga block pieces and gluing those to the inside corner and then making sure I place that smaller box right on top and gluing those pieces to those corners as well. I want to add kind of like a second layer to these lanterns. So I'm just going to use one of these square. They're really nice and chunky. It is just a decor piece from Dollar Tree. It has a beautiful saying on it, but I do have several of them. So I was okay with taking this one apart, but it does have a little bit of a stubborn burlap on it. If I would have it maybe got it wet or even used my heat gun, it probably would have came off so much easier, but it still wasn't too much trouble. But then I did find out that there was these little tiny nail pieces that held that saying on there. So all I did was just pull those out. 
Now, because that burlap was on there, it did leave these little hairy pieces glued down on here. So I did just use my zip sander to sand any of that off. And once I had that nice and smooth, I painted it the same color as all of the rest of the lantern, which is the Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the color Linen White. And you guys, I'm just going to say it now, that is the white paint that I used the entire video. So I'm just going to say white chalk paint from here on out. That larger piece is for the second layer of the larger lantern. This little small Halloween decor piece is the second layer for the smaller lantern. And it was only a dollar at Walmart, but it was marked down to 50 cents. So I did get that for 50 cents. But again, Dollar Tree has many options that you can choose from. I did not have to paint the entire piece with the white chalk paint, but I did just go in at the sides and on top so that you could not see any type of color and it all looked completely white. Now for the tippy tops of our lantern, I got the Christmas lantern around Christmas time last year, but the black lantern that is for Halloween, I did just get within the last few weeks around Halloween this year. So all I did was pop these really nice curved tops off and this part is kind of funny. I just had to leave it in there. Okay, so I got out my hot knife because they do have these little tabs to hold them onto the second larger part of the lantern. And I thought for some reason they were going to be kind of hard to come off. So I was just like, well, we'll bust out the hot knife and it'll be super easy. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is even taking longer than probably just cutting them off with my scissors. So let's see if that'll work. And yeah, it worked so easy. So just cut off the little tabs with your scissors and do not worry about the hot knife. Once those tabs are cut off, you have the perfect tops to your lantern. And I did try and take them outside to spray paint them because they are plastic and I just hate trying to actually hand paint plastic but it did not work out because the paint I was using was more of a satin, like not matte finish at all. So I just came inside and painted them with the white chalk paint. Then I use my favorite bamboo sticks. You guys see me use them all of the time. I literally ran out in this video and I was so sad, but I'm definitely going to be getting more very soon. I have to. They are just a staple in my craft room. I painted several of those white as well. And then I'm using that little tiny square piece that is the Halloween decor piece. And I glue one of the tops to our lanterns right on there. And look at that. I mean, that is a perfect fit. You cannot get any more perfect than that. Now, the second lantern, which is the larger lantern, I wanted it to have a little bit of a different look. So I chose something a little bit more big and bulky for the second layer. And then I glued that top piece from the other lantern right on top of that nice bulky piece that we painted white. And I just love the look of these and they just are perfect tops to lanterns. And if you want the ring to stand straight up, you could just add a tiny bit of hot glue to the side and it will stand straight up. Then I take some of that Dollar Tree spackling again and I just go over any of the parts where you can see any creases. And again, you guys, this is just personal preference. Again, it is such a clean finished look. I always try and do this with my pieces because I really enjoy the finished piece. Look at how perfect that comes out. You cannot even tell that that was two different pieces. To create the X's on the sides of the lanterns, I take those bamboo sticks that I painted with the white chalk paint and I just cut them down to size, hold them up to the inside of the lantern where I would like them to be, and then I just glue them into place. You could also use dowel rods to create these X's. You do not have to have these bamboo sticks. I just personally like them because they are kind of flat instead of round. So they, they're just not as bulky and they just come in handy so very much. So whatever I did to the larger lantern, I also did to the smaller lantern. I wanted these to be a pair, but just look slightly, ever so slightly different. So again, I just cut those bamboo sticks down to size and then glued them inside the lantern creating the X's on both sides. Now here's why earlier I had said to make sure the holes for the label holder is faint facing the front of your lantern because 
I do go ahead and add these label holders back onto the lanterns and I just place them right where they were previously and just screw them right back on. You can hot glue them on if you would like, but I do think adding the screws just gives it a more finished look. I also screwed the metal label holders onto the larger lantern as well. Now to put the tops on the lantern, and I did forget to mention earlier that those plastic lanterns that I took apart for the tops are from Dollar Tree as well. I started with a larger lantern first, and I added some hot glue onto the bottom of our bulky piece and then placed it right center at the top of our larger lantern. And once I had that one on, I did the same exact steps to the smaller lantern, placing hot glue on the bottom of that little Halloween piece that has our lantern top on it and placing it center on the smaller lantern. Again, because I like that nice, clean, finished look, I did add some of that Dollar Tree spackling in those cracks as well to give it a smooth finish. So while I was at Dollar Tree the other day in the Christmas section, I found these cute little wood shape angels and my first thought was they were adorable and my second thought was those would make perfect little feet or legs to home decor or whatever you would like to put on them. So I decided to pull off those little paper wings. They came off super, super easy. And then I used that, again, white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I painted all of those little angels, which were now our little feet to our lanterns. And I did end up painting eight of those so that I could have four on each one of the lanterns. So I do add some hot glue onto the bottom and I always use the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. They are absolutely phenomenal. I always have them and my hot glue gun and most of the items that I use down in the description box if you guys would ever like to check them out. So once again, I just glue one of those onto each one of the corners of the bottom box and I am so in love with how these turned out. I wanted to make these so like simple looking that they could be for any holiday or any season. You could use these all year round if you would like. I seriously think those little wood angels are absolutely perfect legs for these lanterns and they could be used in so many different ways. You could really dress these up or just add some LED candles. Do not add real candles. And let me just show you guys these Christmas ones. I love them for Christmas. And again, you could put so many different items inside of these and decorate them for every season. For this DIY, I will be creating the box shape with these wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two of those as well as two of their palettes that they have. And I'm just going to place them just like this, but the wood pieces are a little bit longer than I need them to be. So I just use my cute little saw that I have shown you guys in previous videos. It is from Amazon and I will have the link down below in the description box if you guys would like to check it out, it is absolutely adorable and it really does work great. So I just cut about a half inch off of those longer wood pieces and then they fit absolutely perfect. So then I used the Dollar Tree super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue and I started placing those longer wood pieces right up against that inner wood piece on the inside of the palette. Then I did the same steps with the second wood piece on the other side of the palette. Then to add the second palette onto the other side, you just add the glue on the inner side of that wood piece and then slide it right on and you have this perfect like box shape. For the bottom, you could really use any Dollar Tree sign. Any MDF board sign will work and any foam board from Dollar Tree it will work. All I do is just take the wood piece, place it on top, and trace it out, and then you can just cut out the bottom with an X-Acto knife. This long board from Dollar Tree, it was a long Valentine's Day sign. It fit absolutely perfect. All I had to do was just cut off the one end. 
Once I have it cut off, I do go ahead and sand it down just to make sure that it is nice and smooth. Then I use that super glue, wood glue again, and some hot glue, and I just place it onto the bottom of our wood piece, turn it around, and then glue it right to that bottom board so that now we have a bottom to our wood piece. Now that we have the bottom on our wood piece, I'm going to be using my bamboo sticks once again, and I add some of that super glue, wood glue, and some hot glue onto the bottom of the bamboo stick, and then I place one on the back side on either corner of the wood piece. Next, I take another one of those bamboo sticks and I just hold it up to the top of those wood pieces, make sure that I have the size that I need, cut it off, and then I'm going to use some of that wood glue and a hot glue and glue it right to the top of those bamboo sticks. And once that bamboo stick is glued up here at the top, your piece should look like this. Now I would like the roof of my little market stand to have a slope to it, so depending on how you would like your roof to be, all I did to slope the roof was cut a little bit off of the bamboo stick, and you could cut more or less depending on how sloped you would like yours to be. And then once you cut them down to size, add your glue and then glue them to the inside corners on the front of your little wood piece. And then here I go again saying little. This piece is not little as well. This is actually a very nice size decor piece. However, as I was doing this, I did notice that this back piece here was very wobbly. So I wanted to make it a little bit more sturdy. And to do that, all I did was take two more of these bamboo sticks and I add some of that super glue, wood glue, as well as some hot glue. And I glue one to the back bamboo stick on both sides so therefore it is doubling up on that bamboo stick and it is definitely making it a lot more sturdy and once i was happy with that i did go ahead and add one of the bamboo sticks to the top of those front bamboo sticks just like we did the back ones so that our roof has more to adhere onto so just cut your bamboo stick or your dowel rod down to size and glue it to the top of the bamboo sticks and now your piece should look like this Every chance I get, I use the faux stain technique because it is just absolutely amazing and so easy to do. All you have to do is add a little bit of whatever color paint. I'm using the Apple Barrel Burnt Umber paint and a little bit of water. Mix that together and then I thought this was just a little bit too light so I added a little bit of black chalk paint to it and when it comes to black, you only need a very, very tiny bit. You do not need much black at all for any darkening on any color. So I just mix those two paint colors with some water and you have this great faux stain. And then you can take a paintbrush and paint it on. You can wipe it off if you would like or you could let it dry so that it is a little bit darker. And you can control how light and how dark it is by the amount of water or the amount of paint that you use. I use this faux stain technique whenever I possibly can because it dries so fast. There is no icky smells, it's not sticky, and it is just super, super easy to make and work with. As you can see, the faux stain works just as well as normal stain. It really brings out that wood grain. I did the faux stain on the entire piece, then I used the white chalk paint and a chippy brush to do the same paint technique that I used on the house. So all I did was add the paint onto the brush and do a streak motion with my paintbrush turned to the side. Then I turn it to the normal way that you hold a paintbrush and just go back and forth blending that in. Then I turn it to the side again, add some paint, make some streaks, and I just keep blending and doing that streaking until I have the look that I like. And I just personally feel that this technique gives the best shiplap look and it just really gives this nice, beautiful style. And I use that white chalk paint and that paint technique to paint the entire market stand. Once the paint was all dry, I turn it over to the back just so I can add some of this chicken wire that I got off of Amazon. It was a big roll and I will have it linked down below in the description box. This was just a piece that I had left over and it fit across the back of this absolutely perfect. 
To attach the chicken wire, I did use my staple gun only down here at the bottom on this wood piece where the wood piece is nice and thick and up here at the top corners where the bamboo pieces are where we glued several of the bamboo pieces together so that the staple does not go through the side. So once again, I only use the staple gun up here at the top corners on the bamboo sticks because this is where it is nice and thick. I then just used an old pair of scissors to cut off the excess chicken wire, but I do want to make it a little bit more secure on here and attach that chicken wire just a little bit better. So I take some of these bamboo sticks that I had painted white and I just cut them down to size and I start gluing them along the back side of those bamboo sticks so that I'm smashing and sandwiching that chicken wire in between the bamboo sticks. Not only is this attaching the chicken wire to the stand a lot more, it is also going to make it look a lot more finished. After I attached those three bamboo sticks, I went ahead and started working on the roof and for the roof, I'm using these galvanized metal plaques from Dollar Tree and these worked out absolutely perfect and I do wanna say that they also come in a black and a copper color. I wish I would have not used my black ones already, but I went ahead and used these beautiful galvanized metal looking ones. And all I did was count down three rows and then just bend it going straight back. And I did that to both of those metal plaques. Once you have both those bent back, you can go ahead and attach them by adding some hot glue or E6000 to one of the plaques and then placing one on top of the other, making sure that the grooves line up. Also, please be careful when using hot glue, the metal can get very hot. These metal plaques actually have four holes in them, but once you glue them together, these two holes will be remaining that is visible and they are absolutely perfect where they are at, so don't try to cover them up. You will need them later on. To attach the roof, I wanted to make sure to use some really strong glues, so I used E6000 on the higher back piece and the Gorilla Glue hot glue on the front piece. Now take the roof and slide the piece that you bent back up against the piece with the chicken wire and then attach the front to the front bamboo sticks and you have the roof to your market stand. And once I had it in position, I did add some of the hot glue on the back part as well where I added the E6000 just for some extra immediate hold. And here is how it should look once you have the roof on and it is absolutely adorable just like this but if you would like to make the interchangeable signs i'm just taking a piece of a wood plank from dollar tree and i mark it down to the size that i thought that i would like the sign to be i do cut it down a little bit more a little bit later on once i realize i made it still a little bit too big but all i did was use that wood piece mark it down to size and use my box knife or utility knife to cut those pieces off and you just score it a few times and bend it back and forth and they will snap right off and you do not have to have one of these wood boards from Dollar Tree. This is just a board that was hanging on a piece of jute string. They do have them in several different sizes, but you could also use a foam board, another Dollar Tree sign. They also even have wood pieces that come in a pack, little wood planks. Those would be perfect for this as well. Once my sign was cut and sanded down, I used the faux stain to stain it as well. And I do make two of these because I make the tree sign as well as the pumpkins. And it is the same step, so I didn't want to repeat that. But I do want to let you guys know to make two of these signs if you do it the same way. For the first sign, once I had it all stained, I'm going to be using these stencils that I got off of Amazon. They are a Christmas stencil and the price was amazing for the size and how many stencils you get. And the detail in these stencils are so amazing. I just had to share them with you guys. Amazon did have some photos of what some of the stencils looked like as if they were done already. So I do have some of those popping up on the screen, but look how gorgeous these are, you guys. These are so perfect and they work really, really well. And you guys already know if I like something, I will definitely leave the link down below in the description box so that you guys can check them out and see if you like them as well. So the link for these stencils will be down below in the description box. You guys, to be honest, I would love to do a video where I use these stencils for 
a bunch of different DIYs. So if that is something that you would be interested in or would watch, please let me know down in the comments because that would be so much fun. Just going through these stencils gives me so many gorgeous ideas. However, for this little sign, I'm going to be using this Farm Fresh Christmas Trees stencil. Of course, I cannot fit everything on here, and actually, I did even have to move it around a little bit to get everything that I wanted to fit on here to fit, but all I did was just place the farm fresh where I wanted it, used my white chalk paint and a foam brush from Dollar Tree, and I just stippled that on, let that dry, and then I'm going to place the trees up a little bit closer towards the farm fresh than it actually is on the stencil, add some white chalk paint to that as well and then I do the same with the Christmas trees where well the word Christmas trees is I just move that up and I start adding the white paint filling that stencil in and you guys look how amazing those stencils worked out and I really thought maybe there was going to be some bleeding because they the price was just so great and you do get so many and for that price, they're really big, so I was just really surprised by how well they actually worked. And here is where I do decide to kind of cut the sign down just a little bit so I didn't have that much excess on the side. Then I use my zip sander to sand the sign down quite a bit on all of the sides just to give it this more of a like rustic farmhouse distressed vibe. And here is how the Farm Fresh Christmas tree sign looks once it is finished. And for the fall sign, like I said earlier, I did the same thing to that piece of wood, stained it so that we have our sign, and then I used the fall stencils also off of Amazon. These are also so gorgeous, and there's so many DIYs that you could do with them, and again, they are for an absolute great price. Just like with the Christmas stencils, Amazon did also have a few pictures of these stencils as completed projects, so as those stencils pop up, I will have those pictures popping up as well so that you can kind of get the feel of what they look like as a completed project. And I will have links down below in the description box for both the Christmas and the fall stencils. If you do not know how to find the description box, all you have to do is click on the title to the video and the description box should pop up. You might have to click see more in order to see links or any other details, but the title should make the description box pop right up for you. Of course, for the fall sign, I chose the Farm Fresh Pumpkins stencil, and I just stenciled that on just like I did the Christmas one. I did choose to do the pumpkin and the greenery, except instead of the pumpkin word, just because I personally liked the look of that better. I also went ahead and sanded the edges, and I love the way that these signs turned out. For the welcome banner up at the top of our market stand, I'm using this burlap banner that I had gotten at Dollar Tree. It was in the wedding section. I really like that lace looking detail on there. It is really pretty and you also get a really long piece of jute twine with it so that you can create the banner. So you also do get quite a few of these burlap pieces. It says 12, but I swear there was way more than 12 there. I should have counted, but I didn't. But let me tell you, you get a lot for $1.25, so it is definitely worth it. To quickly make the banner, I folded those burlap pieces in half. Then I just started drawing triangle shapes that I thought would look good for a little welcome banner. And I just traced them out with my pen and then used some scissors, which were horribly dull. I definitely need to get new scissors. And I cut those triangles out. I cut out enough triangles until I could spell out the word welcome, so I cut out seven of those triangles total, and then I use these Dollar Tree sticker letters. They fit on these little banner pieces, absolutely perfect, and I just went ahead and started spelling out the word welcome, sticking those stickers right down onto those burlap pieces. Once I had the word welcome all spelled out, I cut off a piece of that jute twine that originally came with the banner set and I taped it down on my desk so that I could grab each individual triangle piece and add a little bit of hot glue up at the top of the banner and I start gluing them down, spelling out the word welcome and for whatever reason, I did not use my detail glue gun here and I used my glue gun that shoots out a whole bunch of hot glue. So if you have a detail glue gun, just use that because the least amount of glue, the better. 
Now I attach the banner to each corner on the roof just by simply feeding the jute twine through the hole that was on that metal plaque and then you just tie it in a knot and you can have it hang as much or as little as you would like just by making the jute twine looser or tighter. Once the banner was tied on, I just cut off the excess on either side with my scissors and you have this adorable welcome banner. It does look really cute without the signs, but if you would like the signs, all you have to do is use these fastener dots from Dollar Tree. They are Velcro and two of them will stick together. They have kind of like a corresponding Velcro piece that will stick to it. And all I did was take those two pieces, stick them together, then I take each set and I place it on the corner of one of the signs. And then I stick the sign to the market stand and the Velcro piece that is meant to stay on the stand will stay on the stand and then the piece that is meant to stay on the sign will stay on the sign. I know it's super confusing to hear like somebody say it, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing because it definitely makes it a lot easier. Now that the fastener dots that we need are on the market stand, I just take some more of the fastener dots and I stick them onto the fastener dots that already are on the market stand. And this is exactly what I did with the first sign and then I stuck it to the market stand. And the ones that needed to stay on the market stand stayed on the market stand. And again, the ones that's needed to stay on the sign stayed on the sign. So now you have Velcro on both signs and as well as on the market stand. So sorry about that, you guys. Then I add some floral foam just as a space filler. And for the fall side, I add some Spanish moss and raffia and pumpkins. And here is how this DIY turned out. Look at this, you guys. I have seen a few creators do these with the small Dollar Tree crates and they turned out so adorable. I just had to make one on a bigger scale and I love, love, love how this turned out. I would also love to know what you guys think of this DIY down in the comments. This DIY is another DIY that does not necessarily have to be just for fall and Christmas. You could, again, leave the signs out and then you could put whatever you would like for every season and every holiday. Or you could also make a sign for each season that is interchangeable and you could use that and just change out the signs as the seasons change. Now you guys know how much I love fall, but something about these Christmas trees just really get me in the cozy winter vibes. I love this DIY with the Christmas trees. All I did was add some faux snow down inside and then added the Dollar Tree Christmas trees in a bunch of different varieties and sizes. And this is absolutely gorgeous. For this DIY, I'm using two of these larger wood pieces that Dollar Tree carries. Now, there's two reasons why I'm using two of these pieces. You could probably do this with one. However, on these wood pieces, there's kind of a smooth side and then the other side can be quite rough. And because we're going to be using a stencil, you want your surface to be nice and smooth. And then the other reason is because I want this wood piece to be really nice and thick. So I use some Dollar Tree super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue and I glue the two wood pieces together. And keep in mind when you're gluing them together, you want the smooth surface facing on the outside on both sides. I could not find my wood clamp so I just take a heavy bottle of Mod Podge and place it on top of the wood pieces so that they can adhere together nice and tight. And while I'm pressing down on the wood pieces, I'm also taking my zip sander and just kind of curving the edges of the pieces of wood so that I get the shape that I would like my sign or my wood decor piece to be. Once I have all four of the corners curved how I would like, I take my black chalk paint and I'm going to paint the entire wood piece, both sides and all of the sides going around the piece as well. Once my black chalk paint was dry, I'm using these stencils that I got off of Amazon. They are amazing. I've used them before in previous videos and you guys loved how they turned out. So I want to use a few of the other styles in this pack as well. I will have these linked down below in the description box if you guys would like to check them out, but just a heads up, they definitely sold out fast last time I did them in a video. I just simply placed my stencil onto my wood piece, then I used the bare chalk paint linen white spray paint 
you can stipple your paint on as well if you would like and you do not have to use spray paint but I used spray paint because it was quicker and I do love how it turns out. Then if you have any little problems that you need to fix, you can use a paint pen or even a small paintbrush and paint like I'm doing here. Now that I have this side the way that I would like it, I want to make this reversible so I flip it over and add a different stencil on the other side and I love this North Pole bed and breakfast stencil that is also in the stencil pack from Amazon. However, for this side, I use this Krylon Metallic Silver Shimmer spray paint. It is so pretty, and once it was dry, I removed the stencil and fixed any little problems with my paint and my paintbrush. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, doing this was super satisfying to me, and then watching it was even more satisfying. Once I had all the little problem areas fixed, I used my zip sander to start sanding off some of the chalk paint on the corners as well as along the edges on both sides of this wood piece so that it had this really pretty distressed look. Now I do want to mention that not everyone likes distressing and this is just my personal preference. I do decorate my home with a lot of the things that I make and this is just the style that I like. If you do not like distressing, you definitely do not have to to de-stress if you do not want to. With or without distressing, I think this DIY turns out gorgeous. stinking cute are these mini wood gnomes on Etsy. You do only get one for $18, so again, I figured I would make my own. For this DIY, I used one of these wood planks from Dollar Tree. Now, this one is a little bit different than the normal ones because how the wood was, it gave it that weird corner down here at the bottom. So I did have to make my triangle a little bit smaller, but you could go a little bit larger if you have one of the normal pieces of wood from Dollar Tree. And all I do is take my yardstick, I, I find the center on one of the sides, and then I draw a triangle shape. Again, I use my little teeny tiny table saw. I think that thing says so thinking cute. And sometimes I do make weird cuts like that because I'm still new at woodworking, but you just take the saw or whatever saw you have and you cut out your triangle shape. Once I have the triangle cut out, I take a piece of painter's tape and I place it about halfway up the wood triangle. And then I take my red chalk paint. This is the color Imperial by Folk Art. And I color, color, I paint the entire top part of the triangle right above the painter's tape. Once the top is red, I do like to pull the painter's tape off before the paint dries, but then once the paint is dry, I take another piece of painter's tape and I just line it up with our red paint, and then I lay it down right there, place another piece of painter's tape a little bit below that so we can kind of create the pinstripe on the gnome's hat. And I do wish I would have made my stripe a little bit bigger. So if you do this exactly the same way, definitely make sure that your area where you're making your pinstripe is wider than how I did mine because I do end up going back in and making it a little bit wider later on and you won't have to do that step. So I again remove the painter's tape before it dries. Once it is dry, I place another piece of painter's tape, last one, I promise, over top of the white and the red so that we don't get this beautiful gray paint on either one of those colors. And this gray paint, I do believe is called Parisian Gray by Folk Art, and I go ahead and paint the entire bottom of our triangle. Once I have the bottom painted gray, I pull the painter's tape off before it dries, just like I did the other pieces of tape. Then I'm going to use one of these Dollar Tree gnomes. I did get this this year, and all I'm going to do is 
basically rob him of his beard. Sorry, gnome. Sorry, not sorry, because let me tell you, these gnomes turn out so cute. Definitely worth it. So all I do is take my scissors and I start cutting where the gnome's beard is basically stitched onto his body. And after I cut it off, I do take another pair of scissors because the ones that I had were super dull and I just make the edges a little bit more smooth and not so jagged. I just kind of clean them up a little bit and on either side of the piece of beard that I cut off, I cut off a tiny strip of it and then I just take the fur and kind of fluff my thumb out just to make it so that it never even looks like you cut anything off of it and those pieces that we cut off are what we are going to use for our mustache. And I did also want to clean up the beard a little bit more, so I fold down these ends, and this also helps it not be so long. So it just fold down the top piece. I just add a little bit of hot glue and folded it down on itself with my finger. Before I glue down the beard, I want to attach the mustache, so I grab those pieces of the beard that I cut off and I just kind of pull off any excess fur that is coming off and I shorten it just a little bit with my scissors and take some hot glue and I just glue it right where the top center of the beard is so that it looks like it is coming out from the side and I do the exact same thing with the other piece of beard that we cut off gluing it to the other side so that it makes it look like the other side of the mustache and I think this is just so adorable. To attach the beard and the mustache, I use my hot glue and I just place a decent amount right in the center of our triangle where our beard goes. And I put mine a little bit below where I needed to. You want to put it right where the end of your white or whatever color stripe you have is. I placed mine a little bit below because again, I do want to make that pinstripe a little bit bigger. So before I did that, I went in with my zip sander. I will have this linked down below in the description box and I start giving this some distressing just like the gnomes in the picture. Once my gnome was distressed to my liking, here's where I take the piece of painter's tape and I just make that pinstripe on the gnome's hat a little bit bigger than what it already is. Plus when I was sanding, the red paint kind of made the stripe look pink so I just freshened this up and also made the stripe look bigger by placing the painter's tape down and adding some fresh white paint. For my gnome's nose I really like the natural wood look but I don't like the holes on the side so I just fill it with some Dollar Tree spackling and then I glue it right to the center of where the mustache is on our gnome's beard. Now you could leave it just like this and prop it up against something, but I wanted mine to stand up all on its own, so I glue some Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks end to end, and then I glue it to the back of my gnome so that he stands up on his own. And you guys, look how stinking adorable he turned out. Unfortunately, I did lose some footage of me adding that gold ribbon, but as you can see, I just added a little bit of gold ribbon right to our gnome's hat, and oh, I am so obsessed with him, and I definitely cannot wait to make some miniature ones for my tear tray. This DIY, you will need two of the longer hanging shelves from Dollar Tree and one of the two pack of short hanging shelves from Dollar Tree. Using my white chalk paint and just a simple foam brush from the Dollar Tree, I go through and I paint all of those wood pieces white. Once I have all four of my wood pieces painted white, I add some hot glue to the bottom of one of the shorter shelves and I hot glue it right to the bottom side of one of the longer shelves. Then I did the same exact thing with the other short wood piece and I just glued it right to the side of the long wood piece. And then I just go in with my hot glue gun, add some hot glue to the two shorter pieces, and then I place the second longer wood piece right on top. And again, make sure you have everything all nice and straight. 
You do not have to have a bottom to your box, but for me, I wanted to have a bottom, so I used some of the Dollar Tree foam board, and I just placed my box right on top of it, took a pencil, and traced out the inside of the box. And now I just use my little handy dandy Dollar Tree X-Acto knife. They come with a few different heads. I love this X-Acto knife. It is a crafter's must have. So I just cut out that rectangle and it will slide right down into your box that you have created. And I add some hot glue going around almost like it is caulking it. And I just go all around all four of the sides and hot glue it to the box. Using two of the Dollar Tree wooden spatulas, they don't have to be this exact spatula, but you do want them to have a hole up at the top on the handle. So next I just went in with my white chalk paint and painted both of the spatulas white. Add a decent amount of hot glue on the bottom part of the spatula, which is the wider end, and then you're just going to hot glue it right to the center side of your box. You could use a stronger glue, E6000, whatever you would like. I'm personally using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks, so they stick absolutely Absolutely amazing and I will have these linked down below in the description box. Then I do the exact same thing with the second spatula. Using these little sticky dots from the Dollar Tree, these are the bigger ones. They do have smaller ones at Dollar Tree as well. I just went in with my black chalk paint and painted a few of those black. These do have a sticky back to them, but to make sure that they last a very long time and that they do not fall off, I just use some of my hot glue and place it onto the back of the little sticky dot, and then I start placing the sticky dots on all of those little holes that are on all four sides of the wood crate. So basically, again, I'm just covering up the four holes on this side, then I move it to the other sides and do the same exact thing. I'm sure most of you have seen these tin buckets from Dollar Tree. Well, I like the flower and garden little image on there. So I use my garden shears, which you guys do not do this. Use normal scissors. Long scissors are great. This actually cuts very, very easily. I mean, go in and try and cut one and you'll see. I made this so much worse on myself by using these short little scissors. I thought that it was going to be really hard to cut, but once I actually switched to my normal scissors, which I used actually some really dull ones because I didn't want to ruin any of my good scissors, and you guys, it, it cuts so easy, and I definitely made this harder. So do as I say and not as I do with this part here. And as you can see, it cuts very, very easily with these doll scissors. I cut it down to the size that I would like, and then I use my hot glue gun, and I just add a decent amount onto the back of the little galvanized little sign, and then I add it right to the front center of our flower box. At this point, you could leave the front just as is, but I, of course, have to go one more step further, and I'm using these bamboo sticks that you guys have probably seen me use on my channel before. I have these on my Amazon store. I will have them linked down below. I use these for so many different things, lots of borders. They are absolutely great. I painted a couple with my black chalk paint and then cut them down to size and started hot gluing them around that galvanized metal little square. You could also use the Dollar Tree craft sticks, skewer sticks, dowel rods, whatever you would like to create this border as well. At my Dollar Tree, I was not able to find any of their dowel rods, so I went to Walmart and found this super, super long dowel rod, and I believe it was under a dollar. So all I did was cut it down to the size that I needed and painted it black with my black chalk paint. Once the dowel rod is nice and dry, go ahead and push it right into those two holes that are at the top of your spatulas. And once you finish this step, your wood basket is finished and you can start adding whatever you would like to the inside. I added some Dollar Tree moss and lots of florals. And here's how this DIY turned out. Of course, I absolutely love how this DIY turned out. It is just so cute and it is absolutely huge. I love the size and you could add so many different things inside of your basket. For this DIY, you will need a pack and just a few of another pack, so technically two packs of the Tumbling Tower Blocks from Dollar Tree. 
For the bottom of the wishing well, I'm going to use one of the white foam boards from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to place the tumbling tower blocks in an octagon shape. And then I take my pencil and I mark all the way around each one of the little tumbling tower blocks so that I have a circle shape that I can cut out. Once you have your circle piece of foam board cut out, now you're going to take the tumbling tower blocks again and add some hot glue and place them right back in that octagon shape right onto the foam board. Once you have the first octagon shape down, you're going to start with the second one. And when you add your tumbling tower blocks, you want to place the center of the tumbling tower block on the little gap that is on the previous tumbling tower block octagon shape. It's a little hard to explain it, but you guys can definitely see what I'm doing. And all I'm doing is placing the tumbling tower blocks again into an octagon shape. And you're going to do as many of these as you would like. This is going to be the walls on your wishing well. Now I'm going to take six of the tumbling tower blocks and glue it two of them together, creating three sets of two. You will repeat this process two times so that you will have six two sets of blocks. Then take the six sets of two blocks and you're going to glue three of those two sets together, making two longer pieces. Now I take four of the tumbling tower blocks and I glue two of them going long ways and I do the same with the other two as well. Once you have those two pieces completed, add some hot glue down at the bottom and then you're going to glue that smaller piece onto the bigger pieces that we made right in the center at the top. And I do the exact same thing with the other two pieces, gluing the smaller one in the center up at the top. These are going to be the sidewalls to our wishing well. So now I'm just going to add a dab of hot glue onto the bottom of the side piece and then glue it to the top part of the wishing well. And of course, I do the exact same thing with the second piece, and that is gluing it to the top side of the wishing well. For the roof, I'm going to use these huge jumbo craft sticks that I got at Walmart. These are amazing to work with. They cut super, super easy, and like I said, they are absolutely huge. I'm going to simply cut them in half. They are 10 inches long, so just cut them in half at the 5 inch mark, and you will have it perfectly cut in half. I cut five of the jumbo popsicle sticks in half and then I take one and just cut it down to where it is just two little pieces and you'll see why here in a second. It does not have to be perfect. You just want smaller pieces that you can glue down onto your roof. Take the five craft sticks that you cut in half and place them nice and even in one straight line and then you're going to take that small little piece of the craft stick that we cut down and you're going to add some hot glue onto the back and place it onto the larger craft sticks, keeping them together. And I did add two of these little cut down pieces to both of the rooftop parts. And again, you are going to want to make two of these, one for each side of your wishing well. Before I add my roof on, I wanted to have a little bit more of a surface to adhere to, so I take two more of the tumbling tower blocks and I glue them horizontally at the top of both of the side pieces. Using my hot glue gun, I add a decent amount of hot glue at the top part of the rooftop and I do this on both of the rooftop pieces right away because you're going to kind of glue them together as well. So now just take them and place them right onto the tumbling tower blocks, making sure that they are at a peak. This next step, again, is definitely personal preference. I wanted the rooftop to have a little bit better of a finish, so I'm using these bamboo sticks that I got off of Amazon. They are in my Amazon store. I will definitely have them linked down below. And I just cut them down, add some hot glue, and place one on either side of the rooftop. And I feel like this really gives it so much more of a finished look. 
For the handle, I'm going to use a Dollar Tree dowel rod. You could also get dowel rods from Walmart for much cheaper now, but all I'm going to do is cut it at seven and a half inches, and these are really easy to cut. I just kind of score it with my scissors a few times, going and like spinning it around as I kind of score it and then it will just kind of break in half and sometimes you can just bend them in half but they are very easy to cut. I sanded it down so that there wasn't any sharp jagged pieces and then I take another piece and I cut it down at two inches and then I also cut one at one inch so you're going to want a seven and a half inch piece, a two inch piece, and a one inch piece and again use your sandpaper to make them nice and smooth. Now you're going to want to kind of hold the seven and a half inch piece horizontally in your hand, add a dab of hot glue on the very end, then take the two inch piece and you're going to glue that vertically onto the horizontal seven and a half inch piece. Again, it's easier to watch than to explain. And now I'm just adding a dab of hot glue on the bottom of the two inch piece and then I'm going to glue the one inch piece horizontally on the vertical two inch piece. So you have a horizontal seven inch piece, a vertical two inch piece, and then a horizontal one inch piece. And once you have all of the three pieces glued together, you have this super cute, perfect little handle. Now you can paint or stain whatever you would like to do. I went ahead and spray painted mine. I'm sorry I didn't put that in the video, but it was super, super cold. And to be honest, I just didn't want to be out there freezing my butt off trying to film as I'm spray painting it. So next I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue onto the handle. And then I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree Dew Twine again, glue it down to the handle, and then wrap it around that handle part as many times as you would like. Again, this is also personal preference. I wrapped mine quite a few times so that I had a little bit gathered up at the top of the handle. Once you are done wrapping the twine around your handle, again, as much as you would like, make sure that you leave a decent amount hanging when you cut it off so that you can tie it to your bucket when you're ready. And speaking of buckets, again, I'm going to use those little white buckets from Dollar Tree. I love the fact that they come in a three pack and they are just so useful, but I wanted to make it just a little bit more, I guess stand out a little bit more because it was also white. So I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree Jew twine and I just wrap it around the bucket a few times. You could also paint the bucket or use a different bucket if you would like, but once you're done wrapping the twine, cut off the excess, hot glue it down, and here's how the bucket will look once you are done. Now with the excess twine that you left hanging on the wishing well handle, you're going to simply tie it right to the bucket handle nice and tight. Cut off any of the excess and look how cute this is already turning out. I am loving this DIY. When it comes to attaching the handle, I used my glue gun and I placed a little bit of hot glue right where those edges are on the two blocks and where the one block meets. And then I just take my little handle and place it right on top of that hot glue. I thought that my bucket was just a little bit too low, so I hurried up and twisted it around so that it was up a little bit higher and then add whatever florals or succulents you would like. I did succulents and here's how this DIY turned out. For this DIY, I'm using five of these 12 inch wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I only need four for now, so I do set one aside. And I'm going to use this super glue wood glue. It is absolutely amazing. Yes, it is a super glue wood glue. I always cut the hole too big, but this stuff is from Dollar Tree. And let me tell you, you really probably don't even need the hot glue. I'm just so used to doing it and also wanted to make sure, but that stuff works amazing. So I use the super glue wood glue and some hot glue and I glue two of those pieces together so that I have two really long pieces of wood instead of four smaller pieces. So again, you're gluing two of the boards together then the other two so that you have two really long boards that you can use for your new centerpiece. 
Once you have those two longer pieces done, you will also need a long sign from Dollar Tree. I used this Easter sign. I remove anything off of the front as well as the tag and hanger. And you guys, this fits on these wood pieces. Well, the wood pieces fit on it absolutely perfect. Like they are the exact same length. As you can see, I place the boards down on either side of the sign where I want to glue them. Then I just pick one of the boards up, add some of that super glue wood glue, as well as a little bit of hot glue, and then I glue that board down to the side of the sign. And I flip the sign around and do the same thing over on the other side as well, using that super glue wood glue and hot glue and gluing that wood piece down. Once we have these longer sides glued down, we need to do the other sides. So we're going to take that fifth piece of wood and I use the cutest little saw in the world. I got it off of Amazon. I will have a link down in the description box, but I just took that fifth piece of wood and kind of held it up to the side, marked it with my pencil, and then I just used that little saw to cut the wood down to the size that I needed it. And let me just say, I know I did not use this all the correct way. It was my very first time. And then my fiance was like, no, 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 this is how you do it. So do not do it how I cut mine at all. You want to have that flap down. I did have safety goggles on, but I did not cut it the right way. But I did wanted to show you guys that it will cut these pieces of wood and Jenga blocks or whatever you needed to cut perfectly fine. Now that I have those pieces cut, I use the super glue, wood glue, and the hot glue again to glue those sides down. And then I'm going to take some spackling from Dollar Tree and just kind of fill in any cracks or edges or like where the wood met together so that it all kind of looks like one cohesive piece and you don't see any gaps or anything like that because one, I'm not the best at measuring, so it wasn't completely perfect, but with the spackling it was able to look so much better once the dollar tree spackling was dry i did use my zip sander to kind of sand all of the wood down and where the spackling was so that everything was nice and smooth these wood pieces can kind of tend to give little splinters so you do want to sand it down Okay, so if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that I really don't like stain. So I just, the smell and it takes forever to dry and I just, I don't care for it. So I do the faux stain technique, which is just mixing a little bit of whatever color paint that you would like. And you can do any color, purple, any green stain, whatever you would like. I used the Hello Hobby Cafe Noir. It is a beautiful like chocolatey brown color. And then I wanted it to be a little bit darker, so I did add a little bit of black. But this faux stain technique, you guys, if you've ever done it or you've watched my videos before, you know how amazing it works. And it dries literally within seconds. So try it. Give it a try. I promise you will definitely like it. And there is no icky smell or anything like that. So all I did was kind of get my stain to the color that I want it. Now keep in mind, once it dries, it will dry a little bit lighter. And I just use a paintbrush and I go ahead and paint it on as if it were, were paint. If you get too much on, you can wipe it off or just kind of take the paintbrush and blend it in like you would normal stain. But for the most part, you just need to paint it on and it will turn out absolutely beautiful and look just like stain. I actually think this color turned out so beautiful once it dried. I did have a hard time wanting to paint it, but I knew that's where I was kind of going with this project. But I absolutely love the color that it turned out. And I did go ahead and stain the entire thing, even down here where the sign is on the bottom. Once the faux stain was dry, you guys... Again, I'm so obsessed with this. I think it is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I was going a certain direction with this, so I did start painting it. But let me tell you, I sat in my craft room just staring at it for probably about 20 minutes because I just love that color. Let me know what you guys think of that color of that faux stain down in the comments. I just, it just looks so rustic and just beautiful to me. But again, I was going a certain direction, so I use my white chalk paint and I do a heavy dry brushing, almost kind of getting it to look like that shiplap look in a way. And I do this 
on the entire piece. Once you have it completely painted how you would like it, it would look like this if you do it the same way that I did. And again, I am loving this as well. Dollar Tree carries this four pack of little glass bowls. They're almost like a sauce glass bowl. And I just take three of them. You can use all four. You can use as many as you would like. And I'm going to flip them upside down and place them inside the now centerpiece. You could also glue these down, but I do not want anything to be permanent because I want to be able to change the florals and everything out for each season. Dollar Tree also carries these really cute candles. I think they are really gorgeous. And I'm just going to take them and place three of those on top of each one of the little glass bowls that we have turned upside down. And again, you can glue the candles on top of the glass bowls as well, but I just didn't want anything to be glued or anything to be permanent. Of course, you could use whatever florals or greenery that you would like, but I have had this garland. It's a eucalyptus garland. I've had it for probably two years. I got it off of Amazon. It is still, still a great deal. So I will have it linked down below in the description box as well. And I'm just going to take it and I'm not cutting it up or anything like that. I'm actually just placing it down pushing it kind of beside the candles and in between the wood and candles. And then I cut off the excess where I need it and I just wrap it around so that I have a nice, really pretty arrangement of eucalyptus leaves. Once I had the eucalyptus leaves, how I liked them, again, you could use whatever florals that you would like. I wanted to keep this fairly simple, so I found these really pretty heather picks from Dollar Tree. I don't know why, but they just scream fall to me and I think they are absolutely gorgeous as well. And all I do is just pull them right off, the heads right off the pick. And then once I have those pulled off, I'm going to start placing them in throughout the eucalyptus leaves on our centerpiece, wherever I think it just looks pretty. And again, I did not glue anything down or make anything permanent because I want to change the things out. I could totally see like, Easter eggs in here or Christmas bulbs for Christmas time. There's so many different options that you can do with just the square box as a centerpiece alone. Then once I had the heather pieces where I wanted them, here's that eucalyptus pick from Dollar Tree that I used the Krylon metallic copper spray paint on. And look how gorgeous this pick turned out. This would look absolutely gorgeous in a vase with like a few of these together spray painted this copper color. I am obsessed with this. So again, I just pull the heads off and I start placing them throughout my centerpiece in with the eucalyptus and heather leaves so that it looks absolutely gorgeous. And again, you can add as little or as much as you would like. Then once I had the copper picks in where I wanted those, I start adding some Dollar Tree pumpkins. You could use, again, whatever pumpkins you could that you would like. You could fill this box up with pumpkins. I think that would be absolutely adorable as well. But I just use a few of the sweater clip pumpkins and a couple of these leather pumpkins. I think they look really, really gorgeous with that copper eucalyptus color. And again, you can just place whatever pumpkins that you would like. I did want to add a little bit of a bigger one. And Dollar Tree has these sweater pumpkins on a stick, as you can see. And they are absolutely gorgeous. So I just cut it right off of the stick and placed it into my centerpiece, kind of playing around with the pumpkins until I liked the look, the look of it. And once I had that, this DIY is done. Well, hello, gorgeous. Do you guys see this? I love this so much. I know I've said I love all these DIYs because I truly, truly do. This is absolutely stunning. And again, you can take all of the stuff that is in the box that we made out and put whatever you would like. I wanted to jazz it up a little bit more and also change it out for the Christmas season. A centerpiece like this, especially a simple, beautiful wood piece like this, 
definitely can be used all year round and change out the decor for each holiday. I remove everything that I used for the fall season and then I wanted to also give it a little bit of an extra special touch. So I'm using these wood beads from our mystery box. They are the square wood beads from Dollar Tree. It is a garland and at first I thought I was going to use eight of them but I did only use six and I go ahead and paint all of them with my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white. I will be using these wood beads as tiny little legs for our centerpiece so that it raises the centerpiece up just a little bit. However, before I did that, I wanted to put a nice bottom on the bottom of my centerpiece so that you do not see the sign that I had used to actually make the centerpiece. So I just take some Mod Podge, make sure that you get all around the edges very well. And once I had the bottom covered with Mod Podge, I use this brown wrapping paper from Dollar Tree and I just roll it right over the bottom of our centerpiece. I tried to smooth out any air bubbles that I could, but of course it was not perfect, but that's okay because this is the bottom and it looks better than what it did at least. So now I'm going to remove the excess paper by taking my zip sander and I'm going to sand on the edge going all the way around the bottom and you can see the paper falling right off and coming away from the edge. And once you go around the entire bottom edges, you can lift your centerpiece right up and away from that excess paper. Now that we have a nicer looking bottom, I'm going to take the wood beads and place them where I would like to glue them. I add one on each of the corners and then one in the center on both the front and the back. So I use again six total and once I have them in place, I just go ahead and go around and glue them down. Once they are all glued in place, they will raise the tray up just a little bit and that is perfect. However, we are not done with the bottom just yet. I got a pack of these bead beads of these lights off of Amazon. They are fairy lights and super long. They also have that small battery pack that you guys know that I love. So I want to make the centerpiece look like it is glowing from underneath. So I'm taking the fairy lights. Make sure you add your hot glue onto the side with out the screws so that you can change out the battery if need be and then I glued it off to the side and all I'm going to do is start taking the fairy lights and I do use my hot glue gun it worked out perfect and I go around the the bottom of the centerpiece I do try and stay on the inside of the wood beads so that you don't necessarily see any wire or actually see the lights you just see the glowing from underneath your centerpiece you guys i swear i'm gonna say centerpiece a hundred times if i haven't already so because these Amazon fairy lights are so long, I was actually able to go around the bottom of the centerpiece two times and hot glue all of the lights in place. Then I also was like, you know what? What if we add another color? So all I had for another color was these red fairy lights from Dollar Tree. These I think were new this year. I'm not 100% positive. I just know I've never seen this actual set before at my Dollar Tree, but as you can see, they are much smaller than the Amazon lights and the battery pack is much larger. So I was not going to be able to glue the battery pack underneath the centerpiece like I was able. I'm trying to think of something else to say other than centerpiece, but apparently it's not coming to me. Anyways, I did the red lights just like I did the white lights, but I'm just going to place the battery pack up on top. And for the greenery, of course, we're going to use some Dollar Tree greenery, and I am obsessed with this fern. It just says fern, but you can definitely tell it is very frosted and so pretty and just really gorgeous for winter time. I use five of these fern picks total, but for right now, I take four of them and I fan each one out and then I place two on one side and two on the other facing outward. I also take some of these frosted greeneries from Dollar Tree. These are really, really pretty and really realistic looking as well, but I decided I wanted to kind of sandwich all of these together or 
kind of Oreo them, I guess you could say. So I take a fern and then I take a frosted greenery, place it on top of the fern, and then add another fern on top of the frosted greenery. Then I just pull them in so that they are a little bit more inside the wood piece. And now I take one of my favorite Dollar Tree Christmas trees and I place it right in the center. I take that fifth fern pick and I just start pulling it apart and putting the pieces where I need any filler pieces. And you guys, this is coming together so pretty. I don't know about you guys, but I love the different greeneries and the different texture. That is just super pretty, and I really feel like this is coming out so high-end. At first, I was going to just keep it the one tree in the center, but I wanted to add a smaller tree on either side. So I took a pack of Dollar Tree bottle brush trees and some of their faux snow, and I sprayed downward so that the faux snow really caught onto the branches. And I also sprayed over top of the centerpiece so that any excess faux snow would fall down onto the centerpiece, making it look like it had even more faux snow on it than it already did. And once my trees had enough snow on them to my liking, I just moved the greenery over a little bit and placed one of the smaller trees on either side of the larger tree. Dollar Tree carries this 16 pack of silver ornaments. They have them in several different sizes, colors, and styles. I wanted to use just the matte looking bulbs, so I got those out and placed them wherever I liked. And I did also add a few of the white plastic deers, but I lost that footage. I just placed them right in front of the trees, and here's how this DIY turned out. The snow is falling down. I think this has such a glam, high-end look to it. It is absolutely gorgeous with the silver and the white, but you can also add other elements like other bulbs, other colors, and do so many different things with this. I added a few little red bulbs and turned the red lights on, and I don't know you guys, which way do you like better with the red or with the white? Another wildly popular item on Etsy was the wood Christmas trees. Whether they are large, medium, or small, you can find many different options. I decided I wanted to make a medium-sized one, but also incorporate some details from these smaller ones here, like the words and the snowflakes. So for this DIY, I'm using these 2 by 18 inch wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I pick these up anytime that I see them. And then I'm also going to cut them at starting at 10 inches and working my way up to 1. Now I do use my little mini saw that I will have linked down below in the description box. These do sell out fast every time I do a video. So if you want the saw, definitely make sure you get to the description box to check that out. Now, after I cut them down from 10 all the way to 1, I did decide the 1 was a little bit too small, so I just got rid of that and then kept these pieces here. For this exact size tree, I bought four of those 18-inch wood pieces from Dollar Tree and I did have a little bit left over. For my tree, I wanted to have more of a smoother triangle shape instead of having those harsh square ends. So I just take a pen and a ruler and just make a mark about a half inch in on each piece of wood. And then I draw a line going from that mark down to the bottom corner on both sides. I made my cuts this way because it was just easier for me because I am still new at woodworking, but when you actually cut your pieces down to the sizes that you need, you can also just cut them with that angle already on there, so then you don't have to make the lines and cut them after you already have them down to their size. Once all of the wood pieces are cut, you can place them all back in their order and now they have a much smoother triangle shape. Some of the wood pieces are already stained because I had them for quite some time and was going to use them in a previous project but decided against that. So I had them left over and figured I might as well use them and I was going to stain these pieces anyways. So I like using the faux stain technique which is just whatever color paint you would like to use and water mixed together. I used the Apple Barrel Burnt Umber paint as well as a little bit of black chalk paint just to darken it up and then mix some water in it and you have a faux stain. 
To hold the tree together, I also stained a large paint stir stick as well. Once the stain was completely dry, I wanted to have that white shiplap wood look to it, so I take this bare white chalk paint. I've never used it before, so I figured I've had it for a while, so we might as well use it. How I like to create my shiplap wood look is I take a chippy brush, I turn it to its side, basically like a vertical position, I dip it into the paint, and I start making streaks along the piece of wood. You can see me do it here, right here. And I then turn my paintbrush back to the horizontal normal position and I go back and forth across the entire piece of wood, blending those spots in and you get this beautiful shiplap look. Now I do believe the writing that was on the picture of that little white tree was handwritten however my handwriting is just not the best so i did use my cricut machine i cut out all of the words that were on that original little tree and i did add a few extra words just because my tree is quite bigger if you don't have a cricut and you have good handwriting you could write it out if you also don't have a cricut you could use dollar tree sticker letters or any other kind of sticker letters that you may like this next step here I thought made a world of difference. I just take that same chippy brush, dip it very slightly into the paint, and brush it back and forth on all of the words, and it just makes it look so much more distressed. Now that it is time to assemble the tree, I place the paint stir stick down first, then I take the smallest piece to our tree, the very top piece, and I use some Dollar Tree super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue, and I glue it up at the top of the paint stir stick. Okay, I can't help but laugh at this part. So now I start taking the other pieces and I start gluing them down. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's definitely something missing here. As I took a break for a little bit, I took the wood pieces out of my craft room with me and I did not realize that my two-year-old got a hold of the joy piece. So thinking that they were all there, I used my hot glue and I start spacing them out just about a quarter of an inch to a half inch. And then I realized, wait a minute, the joy is not there. So I took that very top piece off, the smallest piece, and I glued the joy there instead. And I start gluing the rest of the pieces on while I think of a way to fix that. But all I did was take another piece of paint stir stick. I cut it down. I also stained it and then I glue it up at the top of the joy. And then I glue it that small, the smallest piece to our tree, the top piece at the very top of that paint stir stick. Again, if you guys do not make this mistake, which I highly doubt you will, you all you have to do is just glue them on from the smallest to largest, about a half inch apart. For the base on my tree, I'm going to be using one of these wood drawers from Dollar Tree. They have that cutout in them. If you cannot find these, you can use the wood box that has the wood top that also has the cutout shape in it and I'm using this burlap that I got off of Amazon. I will have it linked down below in the description box. You can also use Dollar Tree burlap. They have rolls that will work. You'll just need a few more of these strips than I actually used. For this size burlap, I used three pieces. I also made sure I cut the pieces long enough so that they would go up the side of that wood piece and also have some left over once I bunch it up at the top. And I just kind of wrapped it up making sure that I had enough. And then I'm going to take my tree and two Jenga blocks or tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and I add some hot glue onto the Jenga block side and then I glue it to the back of the tree. Well, the back of the tree trunk which is the bottom of the paint stir stick and I also glued one to the front so now we can grab our box and add a decent amount of hot glue down inside at, in the center and then we can press our Jenga blocks down inside. Next I just start taking those burlap pieces and I start pulling them up nice and tight on that square piece wrapping it around kind of with my hand around the paint stir stick right above the square cube box whatever you'd like to call it and i just bunched it up and kept pulling each one of those pieces up so that it has this really pretty bunched look up at the top and it looks like it is sitting in a square burlap wrapped basket then i take some of this twine that i got 
from a set that was from Christmas, I believe, last year. And I tie it on to the paint stir stick right above the stick, but I don't tie it very tight because I did decide to add some rocks just to make it nice and heavy so that it stays standing up. And then I tie that twine really nice and tight around the paint stir stick and tie it into a bow. And then I do also pull a few strands of the burlap off on the ends just to give it more of a frayed look. These wood Christmas laser cutouts were gifted to me by a sweet subscriber, but they do also have laser cutouts at Dollar Tree that you can use. I do know that these ones are from Walmart. I am not sure of the price because they were a gift, but I do know that they are from Walmart. And I just take a few of the different style of snowflakes and hot glue them onto my tree here and there. And I think this DIY turned out absolutely stunning. For this DIY, I'm using two of the Dollar Tree plungers. I already took one of the plunger parts off, but all you have to do is twist that plunger part and it will screw right off. I will also be using a larger dowel rod from Walmart and I'm going to cut three pieces off of this and the size of your pieces depend on how far away you want your sides of your ladder to be, basically how wide you would like your ladder. So you're going to cut three of those pieces off and I just scored it with my miter shears and then bent it in half breaking it. Using my antiquing wax and a paper towel, you could use stain, you could paint this, or you could leave them just as is. I covered mine completely with this antiquing wax. And I did this to all of the pieces, the two plunger pieces, and all three of the little step pieces. Before I glue all my ladder pieces down, I like to place them on to my ladder to see how far away I would like them to be. And then I just grab them one at a time and put them right back on, hot gluing them down. Down at the bottom of our plunger, there is those little ridges where we took off the plunger part, as you can see here. So I just wanted to cover that up. You could leave it if you would like, but I wanted a little bit more of a finished look, and so you wouldn't be able to tell that it was made from plungers. So I just took some of the Dollar Tree jute twine and hot glued it to the bottom of the plunger and wrapped it around quite a few times, then hot gluing it into place. And I did this on both sides of the ladder. And of course, I had to go one more step further with the jute twine, so all I did was hot glue it to the back of the ladder where the steps are, and then I wrap it a few times going in one direction, and then I wrap it a few times going in the opposite direction, creating that X look on the ladder steps. I did this to all three of the steps on both sides. I think that looks so cute and it just goes so well. At Dollar Tree, usually in the party section or baby shower slash wedding section, you can find these packs of tin buckets. They're little white tin buckets. They come in a three pack and I used two of those for this ladder and I just add some greenery into one and then some Dollar Tree lavender into the other. To attach these little buckets to the ladder, I'm going to be using this farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree, and I just cut off a little piece of it, added it right underneath the handle on the bucket, and then I wrap it around the wood part that's on the step and hot glue it into place. I think this is just so cute and I love how the little buckets hang from the ladder. And of course, I did the same thing with the second bucket, wrapping that ribbon right around the step. At this point, I thought I was done with the ladder, but of course, you guys know me and I have to go one more step further. And that is just adding some of the Dollar Tree jute twine to the center of the ribbon that is holding the buckets to the ladder. I just love that two-tone look with the twine and the ribbon. I think it just looks absolutely amazing. And you guys, look how gorgeous this DIY turned out. 
And as always, I am obsessed with this DIY. I love that you can change out the florals for each season and each holiday. For this DIY, I found this wood piece in the trash. Yes, you guys, I know it was sitting on the side of the road and listen, after seeing some of the beautiful things that Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs has done with things that she's grabbed out of the trash or off the side of the road, I had to grab it because once I seen it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. One, the pieces were already starting to fall apart, so I didn't have to feel bad about ripping that gorgeous piece apart. But they also have the peaks, which are perfect for the project because you will need those peaks. So if you have any extra picket fence pieces, or you could also look on Facebook Marketplace, they have tons of free wood just like this, and you can do it this exact same project. I used my zip sander to sand all three of these pieces down so that you would not get any splinters and you do want to have the rough, you know, rustic, natural look to them, but you don't want to obviously get hurt. So I just sanded them down and then you're going to take two of those picket fence pieces, place them together, and then you're going to take your third one and place it on top. Then move it up a few inches you can make it taller or shorter if you would like. Then I just use my yardstick and trace down where I would like to cut down those two pieces that are on the bottom to get our church shape. To cut these wood pieces down, I'm going to bring out Susie the table saw and this little thing is just so cute and it really is a pretty dang powerful and I love how quick and easy it is to work with. And again, hello, it is just so tiny and cute. I got it off of Amazon and I will definitely have the link down in the description box if you guys would like to check it out. Once I had those pieces cut down, I was going to leave this red piece here, this color, because it's kind of Christmassy already, but I did have a vision in mind, so I had to get there, and I used the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint, and I just did a heavy dry brushing on all three of these wood pieces so that they all looked the same. To start assembling the church, I flip the smaller pieces over to the back, then I'm going to take a piece of wood from Dollar Tree, and I just marked it where I wanted to cut it, and it was pretty much just in half. Then I use a lot of super glue, wood glue, which I did not mean to use that much, and I'm going to glue those two pieces, one at the bottom and then one closer to the top, just to keep those two church pieces nice and secure. Then I take the longer piece and I add some more super glue, wood glue, as well as some hot glue. And you're going to glue that right in the center in between those two first wood pieces, creating the church. On the peaks of my church, I want to create a roof. So I'm using these jumbo craft sticks from Walmart. You can also use the Dollar Tree ones as well. And I'm going to do a faux stain, which is just water and paint. And I mix those up until I like the color. And then I just start painting it on just like you would any other stain. And I do do the front and back of these two craft sticks. Once the craft sticks were dry, I used my scissors just to cut off the rounded edge. You can keep that rounded edge if you would like. I wanted a straight edge. And then I just hold it up here at the peak so that I can kind of see how much I wanted it to hang off on the side of the roof. And then all I do is cut down four of those pieces so that they will fit on all four of the peaks, these two up here, as well as the two down on the bottom part of the church. Then all I do is use my hot glue gun and I just hot glue all of those roof pieces onto the peaks of our church. Once the roof of your church is on, it will look like this. And next I'm going to be using this amazing wood rub-on transfer from Dollar Tree, this gorgeous brown wood. It looks so real. They also have like a white shiplap look as well and also a darker, almost like a black wood. 
and I've used these rub-on transfers in this fall project here and these wood, wood rub-on transfers are amazing. As you can see, I left the backing on the transfer, then I'm going to place it facing down on my church and I use my yardstick and pen to draw and trace out a really tall, pretty grand door. I wanted it to have a curved top so I used my paint to kind of give it a curved top to it. I did go in and curve it just a little bit more and I also did make it a little bit more narrow and not so wide as you can see here in just a moment. But once I have the door traced out, I do go ahead and cut it out with my scissors. Again, still having that wood wood rub on transfer still on its backing. Then once you have your door completely cut out, you can take it and make sure that that is the length and size you would like your door to be. Now this wood does have a lot of nicks and dings and things like that because it is just nice and weathered. So I take some Mod Podge and I place it right where the door is going to be. Then once it is completely dry, Again, let the Mod Podge completely dry. You're not gluing the transfer on to your church. You're going to let the Mod Podge dry so that the surface is nice and smooth. And then you are going to place down your rub on transfer and you can use a squeegee or credit card, whatever you have on hand to just start rubbing that transfer down. And when you're rubbing these transfers down, that makes it transfer onto your project. And I like to rub it down really nice, making sure that I get it all on there. And then as I'm peeling it off, I peel the backing off and I still kind of continue to rub the transfer on so that I don't accidentally pull anything up. But really, these transfers work so great. And you guys, oh my goodness, look at that. For the wreath on the top of the church, I'm using these greenery ties from Dollar Tree. I did have one from last year that I had already sprayed the faux snow that Dollar Tree carries on it, and I really liked that look. However, it is too bushy, so I'm going to take my scissors and just cut down those bristles so that it is a little bit thinner and not so crazy. We want it to look as realistic as we can make it. Now I just take it and form a circle with that greenery piece and I just twisted the ends together. You can hot glue it if you would like, but this creates the perfect little wreath form. I want to add some little red berries to this wreath and Dollar Tree carries these pit berry garlands and you can pull the berries right off. They are usually on a string to attached to one another and all I did was pull a few of them off and then I'm just going to cut off the string that is holding two of them together, add some hot glue onto the wreath and then I glue those little berries on to our little wreath and I place them in like little clusters or pairs I guess you could say and I do a few pairs going around the wreath form. Once I had my berries glued on, I pulled this bow off of another Dollar Tree ornament and I did cut down the tails to the bow to make it a little bit shorter and I glued it right onto our wreath. Adding the wreath onto the church is super simple. Find out where you would like to place it, add some hot glue onto the back of the wreath and glue it right down in place. Oh my goodness, how adorable is that? You can definitely leave it just the wreath, but I also pulled a, another greenery piece with a pine cone and some berries off of another Dollar Tree ornament, and I glued it up at the top of the door, kind of like an over-the-door swag. Once I had all the greenery in place, I wanted to create a cross at the top, and I ran out of these bamboo sticks a couple days ago, but I found a spare one that I had spilled coffee on, and I knew I'd be able to use it eventually, and it definitely came in handy today. You could also use a craft stick or even a popsicle stick to create the cross as well. So all I did was cut that bamboo stick down into two pieces, and I glued the two pieces together, 
creating that cross shape. And then I use the same faux stain that we used on the roof, which again is just the paint and water mixture. And I stain the cross the same wood color. Now all you have to do is glue the cross up here at the top of your church. Okay, so last minute, I decided I wanted to add a drape more, I guess, for looks than anything, but it also it does have meaning to it. So I'm going to take some Dollar Tree white fabric. This is a Crafter Square product, and I just cut a piece. It's probably about a quarter of an inch wide, and I would say maybe three or four inches long. And for the drape, I wanted to have these dovetailed ends on either end, so I just fold the fabric in half and then I cut at an inward diagonal angle and it will give you these really nice dovetailed ends. Then you are going to take your drape and you are going to add it to the cross, placing either end of the fabric back behind the cross, hot gluing it down, making sure that the loop is in front of the cross so that when you fold it over, it will look correct. Then add some hot glue and fold your drape down and look how amazing that turned out. Okay, how absolutely gorgeous is this Christmas decor piece off of Etsy? I had to recreate it and I knew exactly how. So I'm going to start with some Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks and I use the super glue, wood glue, as well as some hot glue. And I glue two of those tower blocks together end to end. And I do that one more time with two more pieces. Then you're going to take the two sets of tumbling tower blocks and you're going to glue them in a T-shape. Now to make it from a T into a cross, you're going to take one more tumbling tower block and place it in the center up top of the T. Now I want my cross to be thicker, so in order to do that, I take some more tumbling tower blocks and I just start gluing them over top of the original cross, basically making two crosses and gluing them together and that makes it as thick as we will need it. Now I have a nice thick wood cross that is also going to be the T in my word Christmas. For the other letter blocks, Dollar Tree carries these thicker pieces of wood and I place it right underneath where the T is and I mark it so that I can cut two of those because those are the S and the M in our word Christmas and you need those to be the biggest. And to make those cuts, I use my little mini table saw. Again, it will always be linked down below whenever I use it in a video. I make the S and the M cut and then I take a few more pieces of those wood pieces from Dollar Tree and I make the other letters just by making them in different size variations smaller than the first two, which are the S and the M. Okay, that sounded a little bit confusing. Basically, you're making the S and the M cut, which are the biggest letter blocks, and then all of the other letter blocks, you can make smaller than that and in different sizes. You can see down at the bottom of the screen what I mean. I just have a bunch of different size blocks and the S and the M are the biggest. So now I'm taking my faux stain that I like to use, which is the Apple Barrel Burnt Umber with a little bit of black chalk paint mixed in with some water just to make the stain a little bit darker. And I go ahead and I start staining all of those wood pieces as well as the cross. 
Once everything was stained and the stain was dry, I used my Cricut machine to cut out the word Christmas except for the T and I start placing each one of the, of the letters in the center of each one of the blocks. And as you can see, while I was in Cricut Design Space, I did kind of make each one of the letters shorter or taller depending on how big their block was. So basically, depending on how big the wood piece was, that was how big I made the letters. And since they are all different sizes, I also made the letters different sizes as well because that's exactly how it was in the picture. Once I had all the letters stuck onto the pieces of wood, I take my white chalk paint and I do just kind of do a heavy dry brushing across the entire wood piece. I left the top blank because once you remove the sticker letters or the vinyl letters, you can see that really pretty wood color showing through and the top makes that pop, I think, a little bit more. But unfortunately, I do kind of mess up and get some on the top of one. So I just kind of figured I would go ahead and start painting the tops and have it all that white distressed look. But what I do is I paint over the sticker letters and again, that will make it so that once you reveal the sticker letter and pull it off, that wood will show through. I like to take my Cricut tool or even a pair of tweezers and grab the sticker letter or vinyl letter and peel it off before the paint dries. Now because I use that bare chalk paint and it's really not the best, at least in my opinion, I do go over it really quickly each block before I peel the letter off with one quick coat of that white chalk paint just so that it is a little bit, I guess, more covered than it originally was. And seriously, look how gorgeous that looks with that wood color peeking through the letter. Repeat those steps with the rest of the letter blocks, then you're going to spell out the word Christmas, putting the letters in the position that they go, and this DIY is done. I think this DIY is beautiful and so meaningful as well, and it also looks amazing next to our larger church that we did in the previous video. This DIY is definitely by far my favorite, so I had to save the best for last. I'm using one of these 18 inch pieces of wood from Dollar Tree, as well as three Sherwin Williams five gallon paint stir sticks. I started by cutting the handles off of the paint stir sticks just by using my miter shears at first, but that was quite difficult. So for the next step of cutting, I needed to cut this paint stir stick in half. So I just used a marker and marked the halfway mark and instead of using my miter shears, I'm using my little mini saw. This thing is so cute. You guys know I love this saw so much and it works so well. I mean, you can cut a Jenga block like butter. So I cut those down so that they are both the same size. Then I'm going to take the 18 inch piece of wood and the paint stir stick that I only cut the handle off of. Again, you're going to cut the handle off of all three of the paint stir sticks. Then I just take one of the paint stir sticks, add some super glue, wood glue, as well as some hot glue for immediate hold, and then I glue it right to the center of that 18 inch wood piece. I do want to mention, I will have a link down below in the description box for the little mini saw. I personally got it off of Amazon, but you can get it at lots of hardware stores like Home Depot, Harbor Freight, or even places like Walmart will have something similar. I personally like shopping on Amazon because with me being an above knee amputee and not having a prosthetic leg, I walk with crutches and it is really hard for me to get out and about to the stores. Anyways, back to the craft. So I take the paint stir stick that I cut in half and I start gluing it to either side of the paint stir stick that I glued on top of the 18 inch wood piece. Once I have the sides glued on, I start adding the super glue wood glue as well as hot glue, and I do get the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree, and it works amazing. I add that to the top of the sides and then glue the third paint stir stick on top. To make this even sturdier, you could use a glue like E6000. I use the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. They work phenomenal, but I did want to try and make sure it was a little bit more sturdy. So I was just going to shoot a few brad nails inside the frame, but I did not realize I was out of brad nails. So instead I take a Dollar Tree skewer stick and I just measure it where each of the corners are 
on the frame and then I cut it down to individual pieces, which I needed four of those pieces. I start adding some hot glue onto each one of those little dowel rod pieces. I'm not sure if they were dowel rods or skewer sticks. I believe it was a skewer stick, but either way, a Dollar Tree dowel rod will work as well. And I add enough hot glue so that it will adhere to both of the paint stir sticks when I place it up in the corner on each four corners so that it really adheres all of the pieces of the frame together. Now that my frame is built, I use my black chalk paint and the chalk paint, I don't think I mentioned what I'm using. It is the folk art black chalk paint. It is a very, very dark black. Normally I only have to use one coat and that's exactly what I did with this project as well. I just did one coat on the entire frame. At Dollar Tree, they've had these picture hanging kits for quite some time now, and they really are nice. They have different size nails and wire and just different things that you can use to hang pictures with. And for $1.25, I think it really is a great deal. Also inside this kit are these little loop screw hooks. I'm so sorry, the name is totally slipping my mind. Let me know down in the comments if you know the name and I will try and remember it this time. However, I'm going to take four of these hooks. You can use more or less depending on the size of bulb you're going to use or how many Christmas bulbs you're going to hang. As you could see, I just turned the frame upside down and started screwing one of the hooks on either end making sure that I have it spaced out evenly or as even as I could get it by eyeballing it. You could definitely measure this as well, but I just went ahead with eyeballing and screwed four of those hooks in total. You could leave the hooks gold if you would like, but because I'm displaying this in my home this year, I don't have any gold in my home decor, so I used the black chalk paint that I used for the frame to paint the hooks as well. Now the frame is complete and we can start decorating. You of course can use whatever, any kind of Christmas bulbs that you would like. You can use sentimental ones. I think that would be an adorable idea to display any sentimental Christmas bulbs that you might have. Maybe your children's little baby Christmas ornaments that you have. I know I definitely have one for each one of my children. But either way, what I decided to do was take these. This is a pack of Christmas ornaments that I got from Dollar Tree and the tops were gold. So again, I did decide to take the black chalk paint and paint those black as well. Then I'm going to take the black cotton twine. Once again, this is also from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to start tying pieces and I did not measure the twine. I just made sure it was longer than what I needed, but I just simply tied the cotton twine onto the Christmas ornament and then I made sure it had a nice long tail or piece of the twine hanging off and I cut off the excess. And I did this with two of the red and white Christmas ornaments that I got from Dollar Tree. The next two ornaments I will be using are these really neatly shaped matte black Christmas bulbs that I got in a pack from Walmart. It was a really nice size pack for a great price, at least in my opinion. And just like with the Dollar Tree bulbs, I added the black cotton twine so that I could hang the bulbs on my frame. To hang the bulbs on the frame, I lay the frame on its side and then I just pull up the cotton twine and place the bulb where I would like it to hang. And once I like the position that it is in, I just tie the cotton twine right to that hook that we screwed in at the top of the frame. You could use anything that you would like to hang your Christmas bulbs. I think using fishing wire would be so neat because it would also make it look like the bulbs are floating in the air. When hanging my Christmas bulbs, I alternated the styles and then I also made sure that they were different lengths as well. You can make them hang all at the same level if you would like, but I made the black bulbs hang a little bit lower than the red and white bulbs. And all I did was simply just tie them where I would like them to hang onto the hooks. Once I had all my Christmas bulbs hanging on the frame where I would like them, 
I want to add some greenery on top and I really love the greenery that is on this grapevine garland that I got from Walmart. I don't remember the price, but I do know that it had to have been a decent price because I don't buy anything if it is horribly priced. So I know it was definitely worth the price. And I really liked the fact that the greenery pieces are individually put into that grapevine garland so that you could pull those out. They are glued, so you kind of have to wiggle them, but they do come out individually. I used four of those greenery picks and I used two at first, placing them so that the ends are intertwined together. And then I just take those two and place them up at the top of my frame, making sure that I could get it as centered as possible. I don't worry about the parts that are kind of falling down because I'm going to place them where I would like later on. But I do want the glue, the greenery to stay in place. So I use some hot glue and just glue it right in at the center. Then I take some of the other stems and I add some hot glue on the end and place it up underneath the first set of greenery so that the greenery is fuller and we also have longer greenery on the sides. Now that I have all four of the stems glued on, I'm going to start gluing the greenery where I would like it to be. So I just pick up the greenery on either side and I add a few lines of hot glue and glue the greenery down, but I do let a few of the strands hang down. I do not glue all of the greenery, just enough to make sure that there is some on top. Like I had mentioned, I let a few pieces fall and hang as I was gluing the greenery that I wanted to stay at the top of the frame down. So then I can just take those pieces that are hanging and I just add hot glue here and there, placing those greenery pieces exactly where I want them to hang on the frame. Now that my greenery is where I would like it, I add some hot glue to the center of the greenery and add this buffalo check bow that I made a while back but never used. I wanted to incorporate a little bit more white to go with the white that's already in the ornaments that I used. So I used the bell off of this door hanger. I liked the size of it and the fact that it was a matte white. So I just cut it off and then hot glued it right to the bottom of my bow. Now I didn't really care for how you could see hot glue in the greenery back behind the bow. So I just took another little piece of that buffalo check ribbon that I had used to make the bow and this was made with Dollar Tree ribbon and I wish I had the footage of me making the bow. I do believe I made it last year, but anyways, all I did was cut a piece off and then hot glue it to the back of the bow so that it has a more finished look. Dollar Tree has so many different berries that you can use. I wanted to use the white berries off of this greenery from Dollar Tree. They do also have a red berry greenery just like this. So it was really easy to just pull these little foam berries off. And I just pulled enough off so that I could take a few and just hot glue them where I would like to up in the greenery. I didn't do too many, just a few to really bring out the white in the project. Once I had enough berries to my liking glued on, this DIY was done. Like I said earlier, this is my favorite DIY out of today's video, and I am just absolutely obsessed with it. I think it is so gorgeous. And again, if you have any ornaments that mean something to you, how beautiful would this be to display them? I truly hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. If you would like, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I would love to have you in our crafty family and hit the bell notification if you would like to be notified when I post new uploads. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye.